there. I'm George Putnam. I'd like to begin with a fact, a simple yet shocking fact. It is this. A flood tide of filth is engulfing our country in the form of newsstand obscenity and is threatening to pervert an entire generation of our American children. We know that once a person is perverted, it is practically impossible for that person to adjust to normal attitudes in regard to sex. Yet much of this material has been described as an illustrated, detailed course in perversion, abnormal sex, crime, and violence. It is also a fact that no matter who buys this material, 75 to 90% of it ends up in the hands of our children. Now, you might ask yourself, why this sudden concern? Pornography and sex deviation have always been with mankind. This is true. But now, consider another fact. Never in the history of the world have the merchants of obscenity, the teachers of unnatural sex acts, had available to them the modern facilities for disseminating this bill. High-speed presses, rapid transportation, mass distribution, all have combined to put the vilest obscenity within reach of every man, woman, and child in the country. In the past few years, this obscenity traffic and salacious newsstand literature have become increasingly worse, not only in content, but in volume. This traffic continues to increase and flourish for one reason. It is big business, profitable business, for the mercenary persons who produce it, and for its more than 800 distributors. The United States Supreme Court has described it as dirt for dirt's sake. We describe it as dirt for money's sake. Obscene literature is a $2 billion a year business. That's $2 billion. Through this material, today's youth can be stimulated to sexual activity for which he has no legitimate outlet. He is even enticed to enter the world of homosexuals, lesbians, sadists, masochists, and other sex deviants. The psychiatric terms for these unnatural sex acts are unknown to most decent adults in our country. But through this salacious material, these abnormalities are corrupting the minds and the hearts of our children. Perversion for profit. Here is the most vicious, the most insidious feature of these publications. They constantly portray abnormal sexual behavior as being normal. They glorify unnatural sex acts. They tell youngsters that it's smart. It's thrilling. It provides kicks to be a homosexual, a sadist, and every other kind of deviant. The Military Chaplains Association of the United States, practically every major fraternal, civic, and religious organization, the juvenile court judges, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, innumerable psychiatrists, sociologists, and psychologists, attribute the moral decay among our people in very large part to the obscene and pornographic literature so prevalent in our society. This moral decay weakens our resistance to the onslaught of the communist masters of deceit. A major factor that makes youngsters prime targets for this printed filth is the natural curiosity of youth about the mysterious force of sex. Yet, on virtually every newsstand is a welter of misinformation which can wreck them for life. Well, at this point, my friends, I wish to make it clear that the obscenity I'm talking about and the examples that I'm about to show you were not bought on the sly from under the counter. They were not purchased on Skid Row or on the other side of the tracks. They can be bought 
openly by anyone in drugstores, groceries, delicatessens, terminals, malt shops, cigar stores, newsstands, all over the community. They can be purchased by children, whether in a small town like McAllen and the Rio Grande, or in Chicago, New York, or Los Angeles. A prime example of one major category are the so-called girly magazines, which sell over 15 million copies a month. These highly colorful magazines picture stark nudity on slick paper. They often present their subject on bed or couch in positions indicative of intercourse or other sex act, obviously calculated to stimulate the reader. The nakedness, the nudity of these magazines is defended and foisted upon the people by a vociferous minority in our society. They lack the moral standards and values of our Judeo-Christian heritage. They not only oppose the principles of that heritage, which has given us our rich institutions and laws, but they advocate their overthrow. For the sake of decency in this film, we have partially covered the pictures and disguised the identity of the models. But actually, these magazines not only display complete nudity, but they do so in a perverted manner. Such as this appeal to the sodomist. Such as these shots which are typical of the preoccupation with the female breast to a point that it has become a fetish. And this one, with its overtones of bestiality and with lesbian implications. Another important problem common to these publications is the dwelling upon teenage participation in wild, flagrant abuses of the God-given gift of sex. This is amply depicted by the pose of this obviously young girl, her clothes in the disarray of sexual activity, with the stimulus of alcohol indicated by the tumbler placed on her thigh. And again, the breast fetish. Note the sensual expression alluded to by Dr. Sorokin, the renowned Harvard sociologist, as being the hallmark of so much of contemporary photography. And then we come to nudist magazines. If they were printed only for the nudist cult, they would never exist. Their circulation would not support the cost of printing. These total exposures are not of nudists in some instances, but rather of paid professional models. Group exposure is a hallmark of these cultists. However, it's been well stated that very few blind people join the nudist colonies. This mixture of male and female with total anatomical detail is typical of these magazines. A young boy in Philadelphia raped and killed a five-year-old girl. And while he was testifying that he had been stimulated to this heinous crime by reading a nudist magazine, a federal court judge in Washington was granting to that very same publication a second-class mailing permit. And then we come to a terribly sad indictment of our society, the so-called physique group of publications. These magazines with a homosexual viewpoint and poses are often not understood by many youngsters who take them as instruction of body development. But psychiatrists believe that prolonged exposure of even the normal male adult to this type of publication, though he may not be aware of its true nature, will nevertheless pervert. Think then of the consequences to the inexperienced youth who, in purchasing and studying this material, becomes a pawn for these misfits, these homosexuals, who have a slogan that betrays the evil of the breed. Today's conquest, they say, is tomorrow's competition. See the tender age at which homosexuals prefer their conquests. Look here at the young face 
and bright smile which could be the hope of the world. But in the other half of the picture is revealed the seduction of the innocent. Look at this poor young lad. But when looking, think of the others who might follow his perfidious footsteps when photos like these are available at the corner news rack. And so it goes, countless poses, still pictures, slides, movies, all with the same content, and more of the same. This picture is not one typical of the physique magazine. It approaches another class of magazines dealing with transvestites, wherein the wearing of female garments is that which provides sex gratification for the participant. This picture, of course, merely confesses on the cover of the magazine the charges we have made. In this ad, the titles of the magazines and their table of contents speak more eloquently than I of the tremendous problem here presented. Sexual sadism, strange flagellation cults, erotic confessions of a sadist. What is fetishism, the pleasure of pain, the worship of the whip, sexual problems of a masochist, how to buy a whipping, famous transvestites, are cross-dressers afraid of sex? These titles lead us to an even more bizarre but nevertheless common product of our news racks. The composite picture here speaks for itself. This type of aberration is usually depicted by showing several persons, one of whom is dominant, and binding or inflicting pain upon the other. And thus, the grotesque costuming and the significance of the extreme spiked heel and the tight boot, the riding crop, the burning cigarette, rubber and leather garments, and all the rest. And here again, an appeal to the sodomist with a play upon the buttocks, the laced leather garment. This picture hints at the common idea of bestiality. Dr. Sorokin, the renowned sociologist at Harvard, says that today the newsstands, quote, depict the world as a sort of human zoo inhabited by raped, mutilated, and murdered females, and by he-males outmatching in bestiality cavemen and outlusting the lustiest of animals. Male and female alike are hardened in cynical contempt of human life and values." Unquote.